Hey everyone, if you have a video idea but you don't know where to get started, then don't spend hours researching on YouTube. Just watch this video where I create an AI system that will automatically research videos exactly like yours and find untapped niches and key points to cover. Let's get started with the flow. So I'm just going to open my Airtable base here. So I use Airtable just as a, a database for our video ideas. And I'm going to show you exactly what you're going to get by the end of this video. So we have a table here that covers all of my video ideas. And what I've done is just narrowed down one for this use case. So this video, video idea is about creating an AI clone of yourself using HeyGen and Eleven Labs. So it's an AI produced video similar to the content that I put out and it will be a future video. So we're at the point now where we've got an idea and we're really happy with the idea that we've got. We just don't know where to start with researching it. So this flow is going to solve that problem for you. And what it's going to do is once we click the trigger to generate, it's going to generate video research. So we're going to type in a search term like AI video clone HeyGen that we're going to search on YouTube. And the flow is going to automatically go out to YouTube, pull the top 5, 10, 100, whatever we set it to, videos from YouTube, transcribe those videos and summarize those videos. So in this column, in the end, in similar summaries, what we're going to end up with is a bunch of different videos that have been summarized so that we can take key concepts from these videos without having to watch hours of footage. And we can literally take this all from one flow, use AI to summarize it for us and help us build a video script. This is game changing. If you're creating video content, you know it takes hours and this is going to save you a ton of time when writing scripts. And I'll show you a bonus tip later on that will help you customize this flow exactly to how you need it and not to an AI content channel. You could do any channel, customize the prompt here and replicate this process completely for free. So you can see in the example here, we've got a bunch of different summaries and key takeaways from a load of different videos. And that's just going to help us in the future write the script for this video idea and make sure we're covering content that hasn't been covered before and actually bringing new valuable content to YouTube. So I'm now going to jump to the NA10 workflow. I'm just going to give you a quick overview. We've got a trigger down here from Airtable. So once we click generate on our Airtable, it's going to start off the flow. We're then going to make sure that we're not overriding our current data because you don't want to delete data that currently exists in the table. If you've already done this process, you don't want the process running again. We want to then make sure that we've got and defined a search term. Without a search term, we're just going to search nothing on Google. So we want to make sure that that's in our air table. If not, we'll throw an error. That's just general good practice anyway. We're then going to send that search term to YouTube and for this example, we're just pulling 10 popular videos. We're pulling all the detail, details of those videos. We are then removing any shorts. We're only interested in long form content for this, but you might be interested at home in your own short form content and therefore you could filter for longs. And then finally, we are going to get the transcript and that's in a separate flow that I've covered in a different video, but we'll cover it here and then append that data to Airtable. So it's as simple as that. We are grabbing the data from our search term in YouTube, we're grabbing the transcript, summarizing that using an AI node and putting that data back so that we have the five top videos that rank for our current content idea and can take the key takeaways and expand on those in our video. So if you're enjoying the content so far, I'd love if you could go down below and give a like and subscribe. It really helps my content reach more people and build this community around these flows. So I'm going to go into a, a previous execution of this flow to show you exactly what data goes through. I'm not going to go through a node by node, field by field run through. You can have a look in the template and inside the community, you'll be able to get help with specific nodes, but I'm going to go over some key parts of this flow and what makes it a bit different and some of the tricky parts. So. In the return videos trigger, we're effectively triggering from our Airtable. So if we go back to our table here, we have this generate video research trigger. What we're going to do is hit generate here to tell N8N that 
we are waiting for a generation of similar video to go and search for similar videos for this title, for this idea, but actually just using this search term. So that's going to update this field, which is our actual trigger. So you, if we go into the return videos here, you can see generate video research updated is our trigger here. We're then going to just take the search term, which if we go back to Airtable was AI video clone Hagen. So this is the search term that we're going to send to YouTube. And these are the videos that we want to see. So then what we're going to do is some basic validation. So like every good flow, we check that the trigger was activated in the last five minutes to narrow down. And then we also check that the inputs exist. If the inputs exist or don't exist rather, and we try searching it on YouTube, then we're just going to get failed runs, failed use of API keys. And actually that's just going to cause us a lot more issues. So we have an error node that basically just goes back and in our generate video research column, which was the drop down here, we have an error flag and that will error and show us exactly what was missing. Here you go, inputs missing, search term, and then link us back to the flow so that we have a nice easy way to get back. The same here, we just have a progress update. So actually this turns from generate to in progress back in our fields, just to show us that actually this flow is working because sometimes this can take a couple of minutes. So we wanna make sure that we know that it's working and it's not just bugged out. We then have two loops and I'll cover these at a high level, but the reason we have the outer loop is because we want to just consider one video idea at a time, just to make it easier for processing. So I've put a loop here where we just go for one search term, retrieve using the YouTube node videos published after X time. So I've set this to 2000. If you wanted to change this to two days, for example, we could change this 2000 to 48. So it's up to you which search parameter you use. And also then we're just passing in the search term. So we're saying, look for the 10 videos that are most relevant, i.e. most popular for this query, i.e. search term published after this date. So that retrieves the videos. We then need to get the video details. So when we retrieve the videos, it doesn't give us all the information we need. So we want to pull all the information for that video. So we use this star term, which pulls all of our fields. And that's an SQL term there. We want to, in this use case, get rid of all shorts. So we remove all shorts that are less than three minutes. And that's just a filter by the YouTube details. We then want to pass into where our AI process is. So what we're doing here is we are setting the URL and passing it into the secondary loop. This secondary loop is receiving the 10 items or nine because we filtered one out because it was a short, the 10 YouTube top trending videos for that search term. And those are then going in this sub loop where we retrieve a transcript and we update the air table with the summary. So one thing we didn't cover at the start was this is done on a video by video basis. So we actually have another table here, which takes in individual rows of all of these different videos. So you can see we've got video title, the channel, a summary of the video. So all of the insights from our transcription process get put into an individual row in this ideas table. And the source is similar video because we're searching for similar videos. And I have a few different filters on those. Then what we're doing at the very end here is linking back to the video that it's similar to. So when you link like Airtable is really powerful because you can link records. The way you link is through the field types. So if we go on a field type, we can go link to another record, videos, and allow linking to multiple records, which means multiple videos can pertain to this video. The reason this is important that we're linking is because we want to grab the summary information that we've transcribed here and bring it back into our videos table so that in our videos table, we can just see for our video idea that we're creating, we just want to see the summaries there. We don't want to have to go back, back and forth between tables. So we link the records. That's what you see when you've got these blue rows highlighted in similar, they are records that are linked from the ideas table. So we can click into one as an example, and you can see this was one of our summaries that is in the output and there's a similar video 
to the one we're going to produce and therefore has really useful insights for our scripting process later on. That's what feeds this row here, which is effectively a lookup row of all the entries into this similar column on the left hand side. So this contains all the summaries of these five videos and the ones below it as well. So when we are appending to Ed, one important thing to note, if we go into this and scroll down, so we've got first updating the ideas. So individually, we are updating these videos from our transcription process and putting all of these details in. At the end of this, we are then linking it back to our video. So this is the most important field here, which is we are linking back to our return videos node that we've taken at the start because we started with an individual video idea and each of those rows in Airtable has a record ID. So to link between them, we must grab the record ID from back here and we can't see it here for some reason, but you grab the record ID from that return videos node and we're then putting that into the one caveat here is it must go in as an array when it's a linked record so we've just put the square brackets inside the curly braces each individual video gets added to ideas and then once all videos are added to ideas we want to aggregate them all and actually link back in our videos records so in our videos table like i said to link these videos, we need to link this record, which is the record ID we just spoke about, back to all of the ideas that are similar to it. So the way we do that is exactly the same. We aggregate all previous runs by ID here. And what that gives us, if I pull that in, is an array of all the records from the ideas table that we'll be able to link to our specific video. So it's already in an array, so this time we won't have to purposefully make it an array when we add it to Airtable. We go into the Airtable node and what we see is all of these fields are then added to our similar column through the aggregate node. So this is the aggregate node and we're just selecting the ID field, which is this array of record IDs, hence linking the records together. We then finally have one final stage, which is just error logging. So in case any of this fails, which it did in this case, we just send an update to the error log to note, to note in our flow that actually this has failed and it didn't go as planned and it would update this status here. So I'm gonna go into this separate flow. So if you haven't used this separate node before, this, is to, this orange symbol is to execute a different workflow. So I've got more than one workflow in my N8N environment. And this just means that actually we're just gonna activate and trigger another workflow. The reason you do this is because you might use that workflow in multiple workflows. And you, if you need to update it, you don't wanna to go to every workflow and update it. So actually we isolate it to its own workflow and we just effectively run it with inputs, which is the URL here, the video URL per video and then retrieve the outputs, which we're then taken to end. I'm gonna jump into that other flow now, and you can see that we have the corresponding orange trigger, which means we're taking in the inputs that were in the last node in our previous workflow, which was the video URL. And I won't go into too much detail here, but effectively we are using Appify, which is an external source to be able to scrape multiple video URLs. This one's for YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok links. We are activating that. I think there's also a community node available for self-hosted versions of NAN for user transcripts specifically, so you could use that instead. But effectively, we're grabbing the transcript from a video URL. So we can do that in multiple ways, but I'm not gonna delve into that. And then we're doing two key things. We're first taking that and transcribe it into key sections so that we're able to understand what the transcript is about and the key parts. And then we're taking that and the most important part for our flow here is we are prompting it to create a summary from the transcript and the chunking transcript of all the key takeaways or action win sites from the video transcript. So without having to watch the video, we're able to take the summaries. And the reason this is really powerful is because imagine having to do this without pulling these insights through the transcript, you'd have to watch all 10 of these videos just to get an understanding of what similar content was like.
But instead of that, you can get that similar understanding directly into your Airtable, all in one column, as we've seen here. So super powerful. This is the summary of five different videos. You can see we've got all the different key takeaways of all of these videos. And the most powerful thing about this is you can take all that information and feed that into a script to isolate certain key takeaways that were not mentioned or bring more value to your video so that you can create more value with your content on YouTube. So I hope that was really helpful. If you want access to this, you can at grab it in the link below the video and let me know how you're gonna use this. I'd love to see some comments down below about how you'd use this and how you see this fitting into your content creation process. Thanks guys, have a good one.